Welcome to the Amazon Savages podcast. To jo- today, I'm joined with Deke, who has sold 97,000 over the last 30 days. Super excited to have you, man. And let's dive into the pod. I pay for this intro, so I'm going to throw it up on the screen real quick. Welcome to the Amazon Savages podcast. Hear the stories of Amazon sellers crushing it in the game and keep up with the latest strategies that are working. Sit back, relax, and remember. If you truly try and work really hard, you will make a ridiculous amount of money selling on Amazon. But you actually have to try. You have to put the effort in. And that's what Deke did. So appreciate you, man. And excited to dive in your story and see really how you got started and got up to the point where you're doing 97000 <clears throat> every 30 days now. Yes, sir, Romer. Thanks for having me. Um, I started Amazon last August, August 2022. And I've really just been scaling ever since. Uh, I got a couple of buddies I started with. I started mm-hmm. the sneaker game three years ago. So it was just like a natural transition gotcha. for me to go from sneakers to Amazon. And yeah, and it's been great. Yeah. Dude, those sneaker guys are always savages. Sure. Like Miles, Flips for Miles. He was a sneaker guy. Tim, my friend. Like these guys, they just they start selling on Amazon and they instantly get it. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, it's like a lot of the coupons and like flipping stuff like sneakers and apparel is pretty easy to find so you're Mm -hmm. just transitioning platforms from like ebay and StockX to amazon now Mm -hmm. so walk us through kind of like august what did august look like last year like what kind of stuff did you start doing you you immediately make an fba shipments you what what type of websites you buying from yeah um i actually got taught amazon by a 14 year old who was in a discord group i was with uh i was in with and he was just showing me the basics because we were just flipping stuff from uh, from like random websites like Nike or Converse and Adidas to StockX and Goat. But then we transitioned to Amazon. And then like my first five to 10 leads, I didn't even find it. It was just him feeding me it from like Nike uh, sales and whatnot. And I was just doing FBA shipments right from the start. Mm-hmm. And what, what type of spend did you start out with? Like how much were you spending I- per month? It was just a couple grand per month. I didn't want to give up like the sneaky reselling because that was still bringing me in like three to five K per month. So I was slowly making the transition. So I think first month I did like 10 K in revenue. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Uh, So my first question is how did you get to 97,000 in sales? Like somebody else who wants to replicate that and wants to get to 97 K in sales. Like that seems like fucking like a crazy number to get to. Like what steps they need to take to get the results that you got? Yeah, you just got to put the uh, upfront work in. Like, I didn't know how to do seller and keeper right off the bat. I had to binge watch YouTube videos and talk to other sellers to figure out what they were doing and what mm-hmm. works well. And then from there, it's just like a slow scale up. So I hit like uh, 10K my first month, slowly scaled like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and eventually had like a, my first 100K month uh, this recent August. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of nitty gritty work of being in the day-to-day of the business and researching as much as possible, talking mm-hmm. to other guys, see what works well and what doesn't. And, and yeah. What percent of your sales would, would you say come from like you doing the hard work of sourcing versus like the community and network that you're part of and sharing leads like with other sellers? It's probably like 50, 50 to be honest. Like I'm a pretty decent source. I want to say, because I've been doing the sneaker for a while. I'm using a lot of the same websites as before. But if I like one of my boys puts me onto a loop or like something profitable, I'm instantly going to buy it and I'll return the favor in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What tips would you have for people who want to get friends that they can share profitable leads with? Yeah, just put yourself um, on social media, put yourself out there so people know you're there, and you exist, right? And it doesn't have to be anything crazy either. Like if you're just starting, post your first FBA shipment or post like uh, your first $1,000 spend day or something like that just so people know you're out there and you exist. Mm -hmm. And are you DMing people when you start? Are you like engaging with accounts? Yeah, definitely. From the start, it's like if I saw someone who was crushing it or was doing things I was interested in, like other sneaker guys, right? Mm -hmm. I would hit them up and see if they wanted to hop on a Zoom or if they wanted to like exchange leads or things to do, you know? And what's been like your most successful sharing experience where like you've shared a lead and they shared a lead and like what type of profit are we talking about? Oh my God. There was a recent one. Um, one of my buddies, he's an eight figure seller. You might know him it's Sawyer. He shared, um, I think it was like 130% ROI lead and I bought 550 of it. So I'm not sure what the profit is there, but it's like in the five to 10 K range mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. 
So what, uh, I think I already know the answer to this one, but what are the best types of products to sell? Um, when you're just storing, it's whatever you're best at, right? So if you like makeup and uh, makeup stuff, just start sourcing there. Um, if you're into like home improvement and tools, do that. And then for me, obviously, I I came from the sneaker world, so I just started flipping sneakers right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very underrated, like starting with what you're good at. I think it's very underrated advice. Because if you understand the product, like like you said, it's not only on the sales side that you understand it, but you understand on the purchasing side, how to get the coupons, where to buy the product from. And so you come into Amazon with such an unfair advantage with all the knowledge you have of how to get the product at the cheapest price possible. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> what secret have you learned that helps you grow your Amazon business? Uh, like we were just talking about, it's the networking. If you have a network of other sellers who are, on the same mission as you, uh, it just makes everything a lot easier. Like I said, like 50% of the leads I find and the other 50% I'm share, like people share leads with mm-hmm. uh, me and it just makes everything a lot easier. Like that's like half the uh, input I have to put in to get the same amount of sales. Mm-hmm. You come to Miami Sellers Conference this year? 100%, yes. Heck yeah. Yes, sir. It's gonna be awesome. You're gonna have a blast. By the way, tickets are for sale right now. Cheapest price possible, MiamiSellersConference.com. $500 for the two-day event and then $300 for the after party. So it's about $800 in for the full weekend. And uh, yeah, cheapest price you can get them for is right now. By the end of the year, they're going to be over 1000 bucks. So recommend getting in now. What's your biggest failure in your short time selling on Amazon? And what did you learn from that experience? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I consider it a failure, but I was running the business off debit for like the first six months. So like that, um, I didn't make as much, as much profit as I could cause I wasn't leveraging mm. and I wasn't getting like the credit card points back or whatever. But after I talked to enough sellers, um, they told me to hop on, I hopped on right away. Mm. And then that helped boost my sales as well. Cause I got used to my payment cycles and whatnot. So uh-huh. I could extend a little bit more. What, what tips would you have for someone who wants to increase not only their cash flow, but what types of, you know, rewards and credit card points, like what credit cards would you recommend people start out with? Yeah. The Amex plum is the best one by far for when you're first trying to scale, it gives you a 60 day payback period. So as opposed to a normal card where it's 30 day payback, this is double the time. So you, if you're FBM and you can buy the, the units, sell it, ship it, and then get paid out a few weeks later and be able to cover the statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah, amazing. That's- yeah. So for one. cash flow, Amex Plum, are you trying to maximize rewards or you're not really too concerned with that? Not yet. I'm still in the growth mode. I want to get it to 200 K a month. So I'm just leveraging a little bit for right now. Mm-hmm. And what about like Rakuten, top cash back? Are you using some type of Chrome extension to get more cash back rewards? Yeah, of course. I use Rakuten, top cash back and Be Frugal are my three favorite. Mm-hmm. Nice. Be Frugal. I haven't heard of that one. Pretty good. Yeah. You just compare all three like on every website. Or do you just know yeah. what websites generally do better with different ones? I just compare it. I just click the button and see which are, whichever one's giving me the most cash back. And How often is Be Frugal better than Top Cash Back and Rakuten? It's normally like 1% or 2% higher, which is why really? I started using it. Yeah. So you're using Be Frugal the most? Uh, between that and Rakuten, yeah. Okay. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, what's a common myth about selling on Amazon? Uh, you need a ton of money to get started. I only started with 3k because I had a lot of money tied up in the sneaker world, mm-hmm. but you, d- you start with whatever you have, you'll work your way up. It's pretty easy to compound the, um, the capital once you get going and yeah, you don't need a ton mm-hmm. of money to get started. Mm-hmm. How do you make sure you're selling your inventory fast enough to get your money back? Uh, I'm purchasing a lot of like low ranked items, making sure I understand the keeper charts, like the offer count going up and down, showing that it's like, there's a lot of movement. And I, I FBM a good amount too mm-hmm. from, from when I do RA because I'll get the product same, same day listed. I might have a sale within like 24, 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And so you're using a prep center for FBMing. So you're, you're shipping all your stuff to a prep center. And then how are you – it must be a, a good prep if, it, if they're able to get that active fast enough for you. Like are you checking tracking to make sure it was delivered and then immediately – like. How are you making sure it doesn't sit at the prep center for a week before it gets active? Yeah, I was on uh, my prep center. Like they're, they're owned by some great people. I'm in constant co- communication with them. And then like the way the spreadsheet is set up, like they'll tell me what's like listed and what's been shipped. 
based on like a color code. So if it's green, I know it's been shipped uh, via FBA. And then whatever's not, it's just, it's still receiving. And then mm -hmm. I'll have like the VA uh, gotcha. see what's been delivered and whatnot. How are you staying in stock on your fastest moving items? Um, that's like the hardest part, actually. I, I just try to overbuy when I know I'm getting um, the best price possible. So if a, sale, if a site runs a site-wide sale and I know it's the cheapest price, I'm just going to, I tend to overbuy so that way I can, like stay in stock for as long as possible. Do you mind if I show you something that might help you out? Yeah. All right, let me show you real quick. So you probably know I run GoToLister. Yep. All right, so let me show you real quick. Boom. Uh, so we tell you what your profit is. So just kind of like mm -hmm. I saw you had some seller board screenshots. Basically, we do the same thing. We tell you what your sales are, what you pay for the item, what your Amazon FBA fees are associated with those items sold, and then what your gross profit is. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can check on a daily basis how much true profit. So. 1300 in sales, but we're really making $300 profit for the day. But uh, something cool we've done, and this is pretty soon, this is going to be integrated with Ango to Lister, but right now we just have a spreadsheet for it. So you can download two reports, items listed and items sold via GoToLister, and you can paste them in this spreadsheet. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell you, hey, based on how much you have in stock, uh, we think you need to purchase X number more in order to keep a 30 day supply. So this spreadsheet, makes sure that you keep a 30 day supply of your most profitable ASINs. So it tells you what profit you're making per item sold. So first of all, make sure you're making profit on the items. And if you are, this spreadsheet's going to tell you, Hey, you don't have a 30 day supply yet. So it's a very simple formula. It looks at the last sale. So let's say you sold it October 25th. And was the last time you sold a shoe and you're out of stock it'll take the sales seven days before that last sale so let's say it sold 10 times it's going to project 40 sales in the future four weeks for a 30-day supply it sold 10 times in the last seven days and then maybe you've listed 15 with go to lister so the spreadsheet knows that and so it's going to tell you hey you, you probably should buy uh, 25 more or whatever the math is on that so the number of items you need to purchase is going to show up here and so it's a very simple spreadsheet when i was doing oa heavy last year <clears throat> did like 300k in sales last year with oa my first year doing it i had a spreadsheet like this that would just it has like your most profitable items float to the top because when you're running a business with so many different asins a lot of times you forget and then you know like you said like sometimes you just go with the feeling of oh i think this is gonna be a good one or not oftentimes you know your most profitable asins but sometimes you just you just forget like there might be some ASIN that you just forgot that you don't have stock of anymore. And so this spreadsheet's going to scrape that up because it's going to look at the last day you've had a sale. And then it's going to look at the seven days before that and then multiply it by four. And so that'll pretty soon all this will be integrated within go to lister though. So we're going to have a restock tab that you can click on and all your most, your, like your fastest selling ASINs will float to the top. Yeah, I think that's going to be super helpful for me too because I go pretty wide on my ASINs. Mm -hmm. So like I'll have yep. a couple hundred active ASINs at like once. So yeah, it's, it's hard to keep track of some of uh, some random ASINs I just forgot about. Yeah, I think software is like paramount for that. Like if, if you're going to go wide and you're not going to compulsively check your phone every day, like you got to have some type of software telling you what to buy more of. Yeah, I, I agree. Scott Needham actually has custom software to where when he runs out of stock or whenever he has less than a 30 day supply, the software will automatically place orders for him. That's fire. Yeah. That's goals. <laughs> like his, his business is literally automated to that, to that level. Uh, so what tools do you use for your Amazon business? Uh, seller ramp, Keepa, inventory lab, uh, seller board and seller snap. You're not allowed to say inventory lab on this podcast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> uh nice so you have about five so so why do you use seller board if 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 you have inventory lab uh i like seeing the day-to-day -day profits in the business and like i just like how it's um displayed on seller board i guess right it'll tell mm -hmm. you what you sold for the day it'll tell you what profit you made and you can see like the day-to-day -day business of like per per day what you're making and whatnot i mm -hmm. just like how it's displayed basically <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of people do we actually uh have that now for go to lister on mobile eventually we are going to make a mobile app we'll probably call it like go to stats or something like that but um it's taking forever to load 
But if you look here, you can see those stats come in. It's it's loading on this account because this is a pretty big account. There we go. Boom. So you can see what your sales are, what your profit is, items listed, stuff like that. And nice. uh, yeah, since it has like all your listing data, it knows what you paid for the inventory. So inventory sold <clears throat> automatically has like what your buy cost was. So your profit's accurate. So like, you don't have to like re-enter what your buy cost was. All right, let's see. Um, in your opinion, what is the most important personality trait slash strength in order to be successful selling on Amazon? You got to have a lot of determination. Things are not going to go your way. You're going to make some bad buys, uh, random Amazon BS with like complaints and whatnot, right? You just got to get through it and keep moving because if you stop, then you lose. And if you, you know, if, if you ever stop selling, you, you lose automatically. But if you keep going, you can continue to scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's determination by far. Yeah. Yeah. Determination with action. Yep. What's the most common myth about selling on Amazon? I think we did this already, but uh, you don't need a ton of money to get started. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I did ask you that. Sorry, I've been shooting podcasts all day, brother. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You're good. I think I think we got all the questions. Dude, you're very like concise. I, I like the way you just like fire off. Um, those are going to make great shorts for Instagram. Yeah. Of, you should be actually. doing more of that type of content, man. Why don't you do more video? No, we're starting today. Today okay. is when I'm putting out my first one. I've been doing a lot of lives with Miles too, so okay. clip some of that up in a VA and put it out. Yeah. Have you used like Opus.pro before? No, I haven't used anything yet. I haven't shot anything yet, but I'll figure so, it out. Yeah, like like with this, we can upload it to Opus Pro. And this is mm -hmm. for anyone watching like that wants to make content. It will actually like AI will find complete thoughts, which you've done a, a ton of on this podcast. You've just said like complete sentences that fully encapsulate like one thought and then it'll take that it'll come up with a header for it and then it'll do like alex ramosi type uh captions and all that happens automatically so i guarantee you we have like 10 just from this podcast like what's the number one piece of advice you can give to a beginner blah 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 do we ask that one yet what's the number one piece of advice we can give to a beginner who wants to make ten thousand? uh just get started you're never going to get to ten thousand a month if you don't get started so start mm -hmm. today Start binge watching the YouTube videos like I did. There's plenty of free content out there with Romer's channel, Warner's channel, Miles' channel, and just get started and put yourself out there on social media. Let me ask you this. Would you recommend someone who's watching you and Miles to go after shoes? Or do you think that your expertise in shoes and Nike products in general and like how to purchase them has given you such an unfair advantage that maybe they should start with something else? Um. No, I would I would still recommend going to shoes. There's a ton of big box stores like Nike, Adidas, Converse that do site wide sales that people can find profitable products with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I would you say like getting cu coupons and those deals? Like, would you say that's like a key to online arbitrage, or can you do online arbitrage without that? No, you definitely need some type of like sale or coupons or like this kind of kit parts or something because mm -hmm. like 90% of my buys, if not more, are not for, not for a full price. And even mm -hmm. if something is profitable at full price, I'm still going to use like a coupon if I find one, obviously. And then like this kind of gift cards just so I can like factor in that extra margin, you know? Mm -hmm. If you had to give someone a roadmap because you don't have a ton of followers, but it sounds like you're pretty connected. And I know I've kind of already asked this, but I want to ask it like one more time in like actionable steps. If you had to give someone a roadmap for networking and building their basically inner circle of Amazon sellers that they can really share leads, grow their business, share tips and strategies, what are the key things you need to do? Um, make your make a social media account on like Twitter and Instagram and start posting whatever you're doing. Follow guys you want to be like. So for me, it was guys like you, uh, Carter Maxwell, Miles Warner, and whatnot. And then you'll start seeing other people in the community who are posting the same thing you are, or maybe like on the same path as you. Maybe you're doing 10K a month or someone else doing 10K a month. Shoot them a message, see if they want to Zoom, see if they want to share leads. And yeah, from there, just try to build your little tribe and to scale mm -hmm. with. How often are you Zooming with people? Every night. 
Really? Yes. hundred percent. What, what, what are those, what do those look like? You're just sending a zoom link to your closest buds. Have you met these people in person? You're just all virtual. No, we were all just in person um, in Philly a couple of days ago. They all flew in for the dinner with miles. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Um, we normally just sit and chat and then we'll source a little bit. Some days we know it's, we have to take it more seriously if there's a bunch of sales um, and we'll just hit it together, run through it manually and just exchange leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, meeting in person hits different for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. All right, man, dude, you're like the most concise podcast I've had today. <laughs> and it's not lack of content. Like you, you really explain yourself well. So dude, you're going to be, you're going to do big things in this business. I guarantee you, like, I can just tell you're only 20 years old. I give it three years. You'll be a millionaire. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. <laughs> that, that's my guess. Maybe five if you're patient. All right. Where can they follow you at? Uh, it's at Sadiq Wahab right here on Twitter and Instagram. I'm more active on uh, Twitter, but I'll, I'll, I'll respond to you too. Oh, you what, what tips message. do you have for people on Twitter? People that want to grow their Twitter like me. I don't know what the fuck to do. Oh, um, your experience and you've been around for a while too. So just start putting out like some value, uh, shoot some videos. I'm going to start doing that threads and sh stuff like that. Provide value to the community. What's the video game like on Twitter? Uh, they're just talking to, to the camera of what they're doing for the day or what their plans are for Q4. They have to be like 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Like, is there a time limit? I'm still figuring out. I have no clue. Gotcha. Most of them are pretty short though. Cool. Cool. If, if, if I can do video, cause I like video a lot. I can mm -hmm. do better on Twitter, but like me tweeting stuff, that's, uh, I've never really been into it, but I yeah. know, like, I know there's so much attention there and I know people like only focus on Twitter and have a ton of success. All right, man. Go follow Deek. Is that how you say it? Deek? Yep. Deek Wahab. Sadiq Wahab. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, maybe YouTube soon. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. Yep. Appreciate you for having me.